So the first dish I'm going to do uh, takes the longest to prepare. So what I'm going to do is uh, do a smoked fish, a smoked uh, trout. I've got some Lewis Lake steelhead here. This is a recipe that I, I, I've kind of taken from my grandfather. Uh, he used to smoke fish. I remember being a young kid and in, uh, in, they were in Demon Island. Uh, I'd go over there, we'd set some fish heads down we'd, uh, for crab traps. We'd go out fishing, catch salmon. He'd go over and collect uh, clams. And then he had a beautiful garden that I remember going into as a young kid and picking raspberries and peas and nibbling off there uh, as my grandmother uh, made, made uh, dinner. Uh, but my grandfather was the, the guy who taught me how to smoke. Uh, he had an old metal fridge that had a coffee can in it, a hot plate, and a thermometer jammed into the side of it. So what I have here, this is enough for a whole fish, uh, but what I've done is I've done half the fish previous, and I'm going to do half the fish now just because of the time that it takes. So in this bowl, I've got 500 grams of a brown sugar. I like to use a demerara sugar. It's just got more uh, our caramel notes, more, more molasses in it. So 500 grams of sugar here. Just going to break up the lumps. And then I'm going to add quite a bit of salt. So this is 175 grams of kosher salt. And then to that as well, I'm going to add one tablespoon of cracked pepper. I like to get peppercorns myself and crack them. It just gets way more flavor than the stuff that you buy in the store. Also, you can kind of control the texture of it. And then I also had a friend that had garlic and dried that out. So to that, I'm going to add one teaspoon and a half of garlic salt and then mix this all together. So the ratio is basically three parts of sugar to one part salt. And then we just season with a little bit of pepper and garlic salt. I'm just going to mix this all together to get a even brine. And what's going to happen is overnight, I'm going to cut this up so we get small pieces. And the sugar and salt is going to remove a lot of the moisture from the fish, concentrate the flavors and help to preserve it before we smoke it. So there are two types of brines. There's wet brines and dry brines. I find wet brines are great when you want to keep moisture into a product. So when I'm working with chicken breasts or pork, what I'll do is I'll make a wet brine mixture, which is usually about four liters of water to one cup sugar, one cup salt is the one that I find works best. And then I'll submerge the product in that wet brine and that'll keep that moisture. So when I cook it, it's juicy on the inside. It's also been seasoned the whole way through. So what I'm gonna do, I just have a Lois Lake steelhead filet. Uh, I find uh, it's kind of a salmon trout, depending on who you're talking to. An angler will tell you this is by, by far a trout, a steelhead trout. Uh, but it's also known as a salmon trout. So I'm going to take my sharp knife here. I'm going to start in the tail end and just go along to the bottom. And I'm going to grab this flap of skin. And I'm just going to pull the skin with my knife on a slight angle towards the cutting board. And then ideally what I'll end up with is a filet of fish with very little left on the skin. Uh, it's a little thinner, so I kind of like to trim up that belly portion because that'll make for more of a chewy, sweet, salty, drier texture. So it's more like a jerky. So I keep that off to the side because some people like that part, myself included. And it's nice to have the options. And then this larger chunk, I'm going to cut those into almost finger slices just to increase the surface area so we get more smoke, more sugar, more salt more concentration of flavors. Now what I'm going to do is take my sugar solution, sugar salt, lay some down on the bottom just to kind of create a bed for the fish. I'm going to put the fish onto the sugar and salt and kind of create some space so that sugar and salt solution can pull up as much moisture as possible. And I'll put that into the fridge overnight. I don't like to go more than 24 hours, but kind of two hours to, to 24 hours, depending on how much salt and sugar that you want in there. And what we'll find is as it sits overnight, the moisture will come out of the fish and it will be liquid the next day. Put it over top. And I could probably do a whole fish with this amount of brine. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm put it in the fridge overnight. Uh, wrap it with saran wrap, and then I'm going to go grab the one that I did yesterday. So this is a fish that I've had uh, resting overnight in the brine solution. As you can see, a lot of the moisture has come out of the fish. It's dissolved the sugar and the salt, and it's concentrated, so it's a lot firmer in texture and, and salted, cured. Uh, I could just 
eat this as is and it would be kind of more like a cured fish, almost uh, similar to like a lox or a preserved uh, fish that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to rinse it off, uh, and I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to put it into the fridge, uh, at least for an hour, ideally overnight. Or I've also used an air conditioner uh, set up as well. But what I want to do is use cold air to try and create a sticky layer, a pellicle layer, that the smoke will adhere to. And then I'm going to smoke it for about six hours in a little chief smoker, uh, using an alder wood or an apple wood or a cherry wood kind of fruit woods, woods work great. And then every two hours, I find two hours usually works uh, for the, the canisters. It's usually a two hour smoke. So I'll do three smokes and then every two hours, I also like to brush it with like a honey or a maple syrup uh, to add some more flavor, almost like candying the fish. Uh, it also adds a little bit more color for visual appeal too. So I just washed off or rinsed off uh, the fish. I'm gonna take some paper towel, dry it off, and then I'm gonna put it into the fridge for at least an hour just to make that sticky pellicle layer, pellicle layer, and then we'll put it onto the smoker. I've already put wood chips into my smoker, getting it preheated, uh, getting the smoke starting to, to uh, form. All right, for our salad that we're gonna serve with that smoked fish, uh, we're gonna create a pickled red onion, a kind of a crunchy, sweet and sour note. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is take, uh, get a brine going. So I'm gonna take one cup of water, I'm going to take one cup of red wine vinegar. You can choose your vinegar of choice. I like red wine vinegar with the red onions because it kind of keeps the color. Quarter cup of sugar for our sweet. And one tablespoon of salt. And we'll do a pinch of peppercorns. Next, I'm going to add some garlic clove to this as well. Uh, find the quickest way to get garlic peeled, especially if I have to do a lot of it, is to cut off the, the bottom end, the root end. You can put it into a jar or into two bowls that are the same. Put them together and shake it like a paint shaker. And then we get peeled cloves of garlic. I tell my students that garlic costs as much as it takes them to produce it. If you have to do a liter of uh, peeled garlic and it takes them an hour, then that garlic costs a lot more than if one student can do it in 20 minutes or 15 minutes. So we're gonna take one garlic clove, smash that up, and I'm gonna put this onto my burner and bring it up just till everything dissolves, the sugar and the salt, and I'm gonna pour it over a julienne onion. About 10 minutes, depending on your heat, uh, to get everything to dissolve. So next, I'm going to julienne my onion. So I'm going to take a, a good sharp knife, uh, take the top off, the bottom off, cut it in half, take the peel off. So if you want to avoid crying with an onion, a good sharp knife helps to do that. Because if you use a dull knife, what you're doing is the juices within the oven or onion are coming up and getting into your face. So if you use a sharp knife, they don't, they don't get distributed in the air as much. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, the sides of an onion, they're, they're already naturally uh, going the one way. So if I follow them, I'll end up with a nice julienne. Right? Follow the round, the contours of the onion to get a julienne. Put off to the side. I always want to work with a flat surface so it is as safe as possible. And then I find I'm going to take a jar or you could use any kind of serving vessel that you wanted to. Just going to put these onion slices in here and then I'll pour the vinegar over top of it. I'll let it cool slightly and then I'll put it into the fridge. It'll be fine within a couple hours, but you'll, it'll be a lot better if you let it go overnight or up to a couple of days just to allow all the flavors to, to go into the onion, meld and do their thing. My sugar and salt has dissolved. I've heated up the peppercorns and the garlic clove. I'm just gonna pour this pickling liquid over top of my onions. I'll let it cool slightly and then into the fridge. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do for our salad here before we uh, put it together is make a dressing. 
So this is just a quick dressing with some pantry staples with a little bit of shallot in it as well. You could use some red onion. This is just a little less sharp, a little less uh, astringent. That's the word I'm looking for, astringent. I'm just gonna chop it up roughly. You could do this in a blender, or what I'm gonna use is an immersion blender, a stick blender. So basically we're gonna create a Dijon vinaigrette. So I'm gonna take half of a shallot. I've got a one liter container here. I'm going to chop up my shallot just to help out my blender. If you chop this all up and mix it together, uh, what I would do is, I'll, I'll show you how I'm gonna blend this gradually together. But you could just do it the same way, but with a whisk and you will get an emulsification. You'll get the oil to emulsify uh, into the, the mustard. I've got two garlic cloves. I'm just gonna rough chop those up to help out the blender as well. I've got half of a shallot, a couple cloves of garlic. To this I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cup of Dijon mustard. Do about a quarter cup of honey. With this you can just eyeball it a little bit. This is a dressing, it's not as precise. Not like baking, not like bannock. And then to this as well I'm going to add about a quarter cup of red wine vinegar. And then I'm going to blend that together and then I'll add about three quarters of uh, the avocado oil to a cup and a half, depending on uh, the sharpness of your vinegar. So if I didn't have a blender, what I would do is I would have this all chopped up nice and fine, and I would use a whisk uh, at this stage, and then I would just gradually add my oil in, uh, whisking it, and the mustard helps to act as a binder to help uh, with emulsification of your oils and your vinegars. And start seeing my mixture coming together, my dressing. So when I think about salads, I look at what's available, what's local, what looks, uh, going to a grocery store, and what's sparkling out at me. Uh, what's, what's shining, what what's, looks most delicious to make that salad. So I walked into a grocery store the other day that has a lot of local product. We had some butter lettuce, which is from just down the way at Hefley Farms. We had some asparagus. Uh, radishes are in season right now, so we got some red radishes that I've washed. And then I went to the farmer's market the other day and there's a girl, it seems like everybody's doing some microgreens now, so it seems pretty easy to find microgreens into in your grocery store or farmer's markets, and they're a great way to add little bursts of color and lots of, uh, lots of flavor. There's radish sprouts, pea sprouts. I also found some beetroot. I used a spiralizer, but you could just chop them thin with your knife or even use a, a peeler or um, a grater, the, the, the slicing attachment on your grater, and I just soaked them with a little bit of water, vinegar, sugar, and salt uh, overnight just to slightly pickle them as well. Uh, so I'm gonna use some beets, uh, but first I'm gonna build my base. So for our salad base, we're gonna use this butter lettuce. I'm just gonna take the bottom off and start to build my salad. So I'll take some nice crisp leaves, take the larger leaves and kind of arrange them around the outside. Now the next layer, I'm gonna add a little bit of beet. So just a few shaves of beet for some color. So I've got some, looks like radish sprouts. I've got some pea shoots and some sunflower sprouts. I'm just gonna grab a few of each of those and organize them on my plate. It's like a purple radish as well. So that's got some nice color to it. Next, I still had some of that asparagus. So I'm just gonna use a peeler and I'm just going to shave the asparagus with the peeler to get nice thin ribbons. And I can put some of that asparagus right onto the plate as well. And then I'll add some radish, some chop up some radish here. Just use a sharp knife. I like to keep, uh, cut off the green, the top, leave that little handle, the root on the bottom. You can do some nice coins and put those on. Or if we want to have a little more texture to it, cut off the top and just cut those into quarters and leave them kind of in their natural shape. And then we can do some white up, some red down. And then a uh, star of our show here, we're gonna add some of our smoked salmon. We can just kind of take that and flake it off. I like to leave, you can see the nice glaze on the top from the maple syrup. Add our pickled onions. Just gonna use a fork, you can see they've softened up a little bit. Just a little pile of pickled red onion right in the center. And to finish everything off, we'll take our dressing Give it a quick little stir and we will slightly dress the greens. And we have 
our smoked steel head with maple syrup glaze, uh, pickled red onion, our local vegetables, and our Dijon mustard dressing.